Fantastic. Right, so we're going to look at oxides in particular, how to tune surface oxygen activity as a way to design activity, selectivity, as well as the stability. Well, 
catalyze you know, given reactions uh, very often we might involve generation of oxygen vacancies, we may involve, uh, for example, absorption of uh, acid and species uh, very often we need to essentially optimize a certain composition of our optimize uh, a certain essentially uh, electronic structure in order to uh, minimize uh, the overall the highest barrier uh, for a given reaction. So we will begin by relating the uh, surface thermodynamic invoking the linear free energy relationship we can essentially relate the electronic structures influence on the surface absorption strength to uh, the kinetics. So we're going to look at uh, first how to relate oxygen P-max center relative to Fermi level to uh, two reactions, surface exchange kinetics uh, and also oxygen illusion based solution. So this study, this concept was first proposed in collaboration with the game Morgan at the University of Wisconsin, where first we essentially relate, uh, compute the uh, electronic structure of metal oxides and peroxides, where we propose a descriptor of oxygen P band relative to the Fermi level based on uh, the NFT uh, studies. And we see that uh, if you go to from a early transition level to a late transition level of higher oxidation states, uh, we would increase, we see this correlation of increase the rate of surface exchange kinetics uh, up to a sixth order magnitude uh, from early transition level oxide of lanthanum magnetite all the way to here is very, very strong here cobalt iron oxide, right? Essentially going from uh, earlier transition metal oxides with three plus A site to two plus A site line and the main transition metal oxides where we essentially lower the further level towards the P band center and the increase this activity. And similar to the trend was observed for oxygen evolution uh, where we're looking at essentially changes of A sites uh, in cobalt uh, type of peroxides, where if you translate uh, the changes uh, in the voltage giving uh, certain oxygen evolution current, we're looking at essentially a two order magnitude of, of increase considering how it's so significant over the decade. So, very interesting correlation, and again, this uh, horizontal axis first was continued. Uh, later on, uh, utilizing actually emission spectroscopy, actually absorption spectroscopy at ALS, uh, we have been able to measure uh, two dozen or so of these cross-sites to show this correlation also exists when we measure uh, an atomic structure actually key mass sensor relative to uh, these cross -sites. The electronic structure, especially as we change the actual key mass sensor of this cross-site, also influence the stability of this oxide in basic solution under oxygen illusion conditions. So if we push essentially the oxygen P-band too high, essentially destabilize uh, the metal oxides. Right? So essentially that we can see that uh, some of these cross-sides are highly active with very shallow oxygen P-bands in the relative Fermi level, they will overfocus. Right? So essentially become uh, similar uh, disorder structure like we would see in the disorder uh, electrical positive. Metal oxides. So the key is to how to balance uh, the activity as well as the stability. And recently, uh, utilizing a more acidic species on the A side, where we go essentially A side with vitamin 3 plus, which is the most acidic gene. And uh, really, through the acidic group on the A side, we can, through an inductive effect, make the metal oxygen bomb or the metal oxygen bomb much more covalent. And develop this business, strong chemical cobalt type has one of the uh, lowest over potential, the highest activity, uh, also remains stable uh, during operation uh, in intensive hours in the laboratory. So, this is what's obtained by essentially electronic structure design in particular, utilizing the business where we can maintain the same cobalt oxygen covalency, but at the same time, uh, essentially. Make the oxygen key band center move away from the vertical and stabilize the metal oxide stability. Because oxygen key band center relative to the Fermi level influences stability. 
designed were through daylight tubing, were inductive tubing of global oxygen covalency, through which uh, we can play with the activity as well as the possibility. Another example of what we want to show is going beyond oxygen evolution, where we're looking at, for example, uh, NOx, NOx oxidation. So uh, metal oxides are also being used to remove NOx. And some of the non pressure metal oxides where cross guides basically have some of the highest activity to remove uh, NOx or this NO oxidation. So we utilize very similar concept, and this is again BFT calculations for looking at absorption of any normal process, and we're very left in front of the content in the cobalt process as function. So looking at absorption strength for different species as function of the surface action P by center. So essentially uh, here we're changing the length of the strontium content, and here is correlated the, the surface action P by center. Uh, note that we see that NO doesn't go on to this. On the other hand, NO actually uh, will go on to the oxygen side. So NO will go on to the side and pull oxygen uh, off the surface, away from the surface, or have NO2 also pull the surface actually uh, off the surface a little bit to form a non tray. Uh, so this is uh, again to show that surface action P can correlate the surface uh, oxygen activity. Species and this trend in increase of torsion strength of the NO and NO2 uh, was supported by surface speciation of uh, under pressure SPS and the ALS were uh, essentially so the increase of torsion content, uh, move the thermal level closer to the P by center. We see more of NO go down to uh, O as well as we see NO2 go uh, down to O to the NO3. Thank you. 
equivalent level outside of the weak way to show the highest selectivity uh, for such genes. So again, this is another example of how we can play with the electronic structure of oxides to uh, control the selectivity of oxidative and hydrogenation reactions. Uh, similarly, my perhaps related example is in lithium ions, these like, so more positive electrical materials are laser transition metal oxide and the public charge to the is a laser transition metal and then you see a fourth very similar to uh, the uh, ox oxide tablets we use for oxygen pollution reactions. So the surfaces <laughs> of laser transition metal oxides in the lithium ion batteries has also a large thermodynamic driving force to oxidatively dehydrogenate uh, the electrolytes. So the lithium ion batteries Battery materials are soaked in essentially carbonate-based uh, electrolytes. So as we go, uh, for, for example, from manganite to late transition metal, typically the material used in high energy materials are made for cobalt-based. You can see there is a large driving force for uh, oxidating the dissociation absorption of PC molecules on the surface of the carbons or on the surface O, and then dissociate the hydrogen to generate the protons on the surfaces. And this essentially gave rise to uh, that as we increase the nickel content, the batteries will have a more of a thermal instability as well as we reduce the cycle. So we want to essentially understand this particular mechanism, and that's uh, really this idea or this mechanism, a failure mechanism, that came out of our work in catalysis relating oxide electronic structure to oxidative dehydrogenation of electrolyte solid. So the basic idea is similar that we have highly high oxygen activity uh, on the surfaces of positive electrical materials. It can essentially thermodynamically associate uh, ethylene carbonate and generate protic species, and the protic species absorb onto O, uh, essentially uh, simultaneously reduce the metal oxide. Uh, on the surfaces, and uh, this protic species will further react with uh, anions or electrolyte salts and uh, further degrade uh, the electrolyte by reducing its ion conductivity and also increase uh, the impedance on the surface uh, due to the generated organic fragment due to the oxidative dehydrogenation of the carbonate solvent. And so we essentially provided. Uh, unique experimental evidence for the oxidative dehydrogenation process uh, utilizing surface enhanced FTIR. So you make this type of lithium ion batteries and you have the window directly looking at essentially the electrolytes uh, in contact with the positive electrical materials. So as we charge the battery at the beginning of the charge, even at let's say voltage is 3.9 volt, uh, we see essentially increase signals at a higher wave number expected for uh, EC or lithium or EC. And these uh, signals, appearance of these signals, uh, can be related to a generation of uh, VC, essentially removing of two hydrogen from EC and form a double bond, or dehydrogenated of one hydrogen from the EC molecules. And this is uh, validated through uh, DFT calculations of these uh, oxidated uh, dehydrogenation process. And this is further supported by the fact that if we survey all possible surfaces, right, so if we look at, let's say, aluminum oxide or fluorinated, fluor fluoride surfaces, the driving force for this uh, oxidative dehydrogenation will not occur, at least in thermodynamically unfavorable. If we coat the surfaces of metal oxide, weight, NMC, which is nickel, manganese, cobalt, with 80% of nickel, if we coat the surface with a metal fluoride, and we see the battery can be cycled uh, without uh, uh, substantial degradation, further uh, support the increase in stability. One can also support this mechanism uh, by designing new electrical solvent or new electrolyte that got rid of carbonate. We design essentially a solvent with a sulfur emit like solvent. And these solvent molecules are free of hydrogen that are subject to oxidative dehydrogenation. 
And you can see in this electrolyte, both the solvent and the salt have very similar structure, free of hydrogen that might be subject to oxidative dehydrogenation. And utilizing such electrolytes, right, we see much greater stability and the more intact the particles in contrast to this fracture of particles after cycling in the carbonate. And this uh, fracture surface has to do with essentially generation of acidic species and uh, causing intergranular uh, cracking during the back of the So this is another example of perhaps relating acidic dehydrogenation oxide electronic structure, but uh, in a context traditionally we will not think of, of a catalysis. We want to, uh, to, to mention that uh, recently we have been essentially uh, relating uh, such uh, oxide electronic structure uh, to also stability, to design acid stable oxygen pollution or oxygen reduction uh, catalysts of free of transition metal, for example. In, in this case, that if you change, let's say, the metal, Manganese oxygen covalency, right? Uh, if we make the metal manganese oxygen bond stronger or more covalent, and you can see that we increase essentially the stability by minimizing the amount of manganese dissolved, right? So tuning the electronic structure where metal oxygen bond strength can be also correlate to design a stability in the acid. And one can essentially correlate this type of essentially a correlation and map out utilizing all oxides in the children project to search for new oxide uh, chemistry that can be stable also exhibit a uh, catalytic activity of oxygen pollution. And going beyond metal oxides, we can essentially think of changing the ligands, right? So metal uh, other ligands such as nitrate, right? a very similar argument can be made. So if you uh, increase the covalency between metal and nitrogen, uh, we also uh, know that it can essentially change the stability of the metal nitrate in acid and generate essentially trends in how easy or how fast it can generate ammonia ions in acid. It also correlates essentially with the nitrogen p band control, specifically the metal nitrogen bond ratio essentially the, the large or complete conversion to ammonia uh, from this iron or nickel nitride in acid uh, to some of the early transition metal nitrides can be explained also uh, by its electronic trends. So I want to mention that so far we've been looking at correlation. So either correlating the surface electronic structure to, uh, let's say, some catalytic activity, some uh, stability. We know correlation is not a causation. So we've been also in parallel uh, doing single crystal uh, studies where we can essentially uh, connect electro electrochemistry, surface speciation, uh, in situ in the electrochemical environment. So we can actually see and differentiate the different type of surface active sites. So in particular, uh, interested in probing what happens to an electrified interface uh, to these uh, surface sites. We utilize rutile because the rutile uh, ruthenium dioxide uh, are widely available as a single crystal study. So we perform in situ surface actually scattering at uh, our national lab. So we have single crystal immersion electrochemical style. We can collect beautiful electrochemistry simultaneously you see how the structure uh, of the surface will change. In particular, we're interested in rods, so surface completion rods are free of ruthenium because they will be mostly sensitive to surface oxygen, they will be sensitive to surface sorbates, in particular, sensitive to the protonation of water to, for example, OH to O and to OOH. So that's something essentially we can uh, deduce uh, from these uh, surface. A crystal surface completion rod, and through which we can essentially uh, monitor the surfaces, the function of voltages. Let's say on the ruthenium cross side, to first to notice an oxygen that far away from the ruthenium site and gradually it shortens its increase in voltage. 
a couple of experimental measurement and EFT calculation. We know this is essentially absorption in water and gradually become deprotonated to water OH, OH to O, and essentially generation of this peroxyl species that potentially be limit. And coupling with density functional theory done uh, by Rashma as well as uh, manual that they show that for this particular surfaces, it is really the deep protonation of this peroxyl uh, stabilized by this protons on nearby oxygen site is really limited. And if we essentially uh, remove uh, this proton uh, at the last step, well, then we have essentially bearless oxygen illusion. And this provides it's really a framework. We can go beyond just basic description of surface oxygen sites or surface electronic structure, because now if we change the surfaces, 110, 110, and 101, we have all cut sites. But all the cut sites essentially have very different electronic structure. And because the nearby oxygen coordination are different. So that you can see for this essentially cut site, it has very different absorption energy for O, uh, as well as uh, for uh, very different electronic structure uh, for this uh, absorbed O site. So that now this allows us to go beyond uh, surface electronic structure specific activity to a site specific activity. So that we, if we go from 110 to 110, essentially we weaken the surfaces, we weaken the absorption of the surfaces, and uh, then uh, the real limiting step essentially uh, is moved up and this barrier is no longer uh, exhibiting the barrier. So we uh, expect uh, the surfaces will have higher activity. Relative to the 101. On the other hand, if we have 101 surface, then the uh, absorption energy for all those O bases we can further, then the step before from O to OH becomes true limit. So that we have essentially this type of uh, a trend from 110 to 101 to uh, 101 surfaces as we tune essentially uh, the specific uh, site of oxygen. Uh, on these surfaces and they give rise to essentially uh, agreement between either experimental uh, correlated trend or computational uh, correlated trend. So this inspires to think about instead of designing surface electronic structure, surface atomic structure uh, to design activity, we want to go per atom properties. So can we think of you know looking at per atom of metal or surface oxygen. Right? So there's many different uh, metal on the surfaces, many uh, oxygen sites on the surfaces. They all have different uh, electronic vibration of fingerprints. So this is what we are set out to do, essentially uh, linking the magnetic property, electronic property the charges uh, of, uh, as well as the vibration of frequency of each size and develop a machine learning model. And this machine learning learning model we're using is a crystallographic convolution neural network developed by Jeff Grossman, uh, which is unique in capturing the local environment of the surfaces of the atoms and allow us to develop a machine learning model to uh, particularly designing uh, oxides uh, with a large number of substitutes, for example, high entropy metal oxides to explore a territory is uh, typically uh, difficult to explore experimentally uh, as well as uh, computation uh, using EFT. So one of the, uh, the, the function of such a model potentially designing space will be uh, in the space of uh, metal oxides or inorganic materials uh, combined with uh, organic uh, hybrids. So this is one example where we have a layered metal oxides separated with some organic ligand and within this uh, framework we can uh, substitute or vary essentially as organic uh, linker that changes essentially the environment of NO6 because the four of the oxygen are regular metal oxides and two of the oxygen are related to the organic linkers as well as we can increase uh, the metal substituents within such organic framework allow us to have much greater degree of tunability of redox couple, uh, redox potential for the transmission model, as well as uh, OPR activity. So I think this is much greater uh, 
transitional space, electronic structure space of returnability. So I want to uh, hand to say this is, you know, at the beginning of the investigation, we're only looking at uh, surfaces, we like to try to find interface by tuning the surface electronic structure. We're relating electronic structure to some other dynamic barriers. And uh, where's really exciting frontier is how to think about these number point interactions where it can, which can play an important role changing the kinetic barriers in proton electron transfer uh, coupled or decoupled reactions, which also can change rates of reactions by order of magnitude as well as. A selectivity. So I want to thank you for your attention and I want to thank uh, the group members uh, whom I have the privilege to work with in the past uh, decades, a few years. I want to particularly highlight Reshma, Rausberg, and Jonathan, Emmanuel, uh, Livia, and Yang Yu, and Yirui, and Jaski, and those, of course, our uh, collaborators and sponsors. Thank you so much for. We say, look, uh, this, there is a correlation between the thermodynamic barriers uh, to essentially uh, the, the barrier that both thermodynamic and kinetic. Right? So, of course, uh, this is something we want to further explore to test the space uh, by essentially modifying the electrified interface, how to change essentially uh, the proton, um, essentially proton electron uh, coupled reactions, and which, you know, in some reactions, We've seen that reactivity by changing only the kinetic barrier, can, we can influence the rate by two order magnitude. So the first uh, question, if I understand correctly, is uh, whether we have a surface speciation. Uh, I think the first one is, uh, can you also use the surface oxygen activity to explain the OPH of protein selectivity between the protein and the CO2 that is from experimental data? That's what we proposed. Oh, sorry. So yeah. So essentially, that's essentially uh, the we propose that hypothesis. This really is due to the surface uh, activity. There's two opposite energetics. One is increase the dehydrogenation re dehydrogenation reaction on surface oxygen. There is the opposite trend, which is uh, difficulty filling oxygen vacancies where the surface become poisoned by carbonate. So that you have the opposite essentially correlation, so therefore one needs to optimize the electronic structure of surface activity to enhance the selectivity. Okay. Maybe we'll take one more question. Uh, thank you for your talk. I think there were uh, a range of kind of sizes used from uh, conductors to insulators and maybe directors to parametric stress, but this is a uh, relationship that correlation with uh, two P band center, like universal across those different uh, electronic properties of metal oxides, because DFT uh, outputs for semiconductors or insulators, the top of the conducting band as a metal, whereas uh, if it almost appears very to the metal, uh, metal for the for those two to be whether it is the center of the odds and the number that already top connecting them. Great question. So this is something that we addressed a few years ago. I 
looking at uh, measuring uh, the cross size, where you can actually uh, measure out towards the length of span, the length of span, the fermion level, and you can actually see if you look at uh, some encounters and looking at actually the evolution. Right? So then you have the uh, initial lead that will be a better one. Right? So then there will be a lot of transfer in the image. On the other hand, if you look at the metallic cross size, right? and so I many of the many, many cross size are metallic, many of the cobalt cross size are metallic. If you look at the different metallic uh, conductors, then you can actually propose how the atomic structure may influence the information production rates. Right? So if you want to say consider all factors, right? so don't want to have to look at what's limiting for electron transfer or limiting for information. Alright, with this we'll thank the speaker. Thank you very much.